Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today it is time to do November's Book of the Month Pick or Pass. <music> If you are new to this video series, it is essentially a reaction video where I react to all of the selections made by Book of the Month for the month, compare them to the predictions I made, and tell you what I decided to select for my box or if I decided to pass altogether for the month. Now, as was kind of expected, Book of the Month definitely did their own thing for the month of November, which I'm not really surprised by because November in general was a very slow publishing month. There weren't very many big releases and there weren't even very many repeat authors publishing books that I thought Book of the Month might want to feature for the month of November. I was definitely completely off base with all of their main selections and I got most of the add-on selections right but this was also a very slow add-on month for the book of the month. I think there were only five new add-ons in total and one of them we were already aware of at the time I made my prediction video and that was the special limited edition of Bloodguard. So it was definitely a very weird month for book of the month all around and we are just going to go ahead and jump right into it starting of course with the main selections for the month. The very first book featured for the month was a fantasy book called The Road of Bones by Demi Winters. Now I I believe it was this one. I could be incorrect, but I believe it was this one that was originally published independently or self-published last year, and it has since been picked up by traditional publishers. This is a book that I had never heard of before. It definitely wasn't on my radar when I made these predictions, so this one was completely out of left field for me, but it is apparently a Viking-inspired romance, and those seem to be gaining in popularity as well. This says, Scylla Nordvig is running for her life. The Queen of Isildur has sent warriors to bring Scylla to Sunavik, where death awaits her. Her. When her father is killed, his last words set Scylla on a perilous quest. Travel the treacherous road of bones, a thousand mile stretch haunted by warbands, creatures of darkness, and a mysterious murderer, and go to Copa where a shield house awaits her. After barely surviving the first stretch of road, a desperate Scylla sneaks into a supply wagon belonging to the notorious Blood Axe crew. To make it to Copa, she must win over Axe Eyes, the brooding leader of the crew, while avoiding the wolf, his distractingly handsome right-hand man. But the queen's ruthless assassin has other plans and hunts Scylla obsessively. Will Scylla make it safely to Copa, or will she fall prey to the of the Road of Bones. So this definitely seems somewhat of kind of a quest. They're definitely on an adventure. They have to travel this thousand mile long road and anything could happen because it's filled with dangerous things. This is definitely not one that was of really any interest to me. I'm very selective of the fantasy that I choose and when I do read a fantasy it is not in the Book of the Month edition so I definitely did not select this but I have seen it going around. I think a lot of people were actually really excited to see this one featured and you'll have to let me know if this is one that you selected for your box. The next selection was a literary fiction called Dirty Diana by Jen Besser and Shauna Festi. Now this was also a November release that wasn't really on my radar and now looking back on it I'm really surprised that it wasn't. I'm really surprised that this is not one that was on my radar to feature in the book of the month predictions because this definitely seems like something they would have selected. This says Diana Wood has a job she likes and a husband Oliver she loves. Together they have a daughter they adore. She and Oliver spend so much time together that they even carpool to work in the same office. They're in married love which isn't exactly the same as love love but it's fine. Or is it? Diana and Oliver haven't had sex in months and their intimacy seems more like a memory than a reality. The cozy trappings of Diana's life in Dallas, Texas have become ever more confining. She is restless, growing more distant from Oliver by the day. A trip to see an old friend in Santa Fe prompts Diana to remember the woman she used to be, an aspiring artist, someone devoted to creativity, spontaneity, sensuality. In her past, especially with Jasper, the dashing photographer with whom she once had an unforgettable love affair, Diana let herself fantasize. She let her body lead the way. She was wholly alive. Returning to Dallas, Diana decides to rediscover the deeply feeling woman she once was. She begins in interviewing other women, painting their portraits as they speak. She encourages them to give voice to their secret desires as she captures their deepest innermost fantasies. But is it possible for Diana to reclaim her more sensual self and maintain the marriage she's committed to? What if connecting to her own desires means dissolving the safe life she is so carefully cultivated? So while I'm sure that this is going to be deeper than what it originally sounds, this basically just sounds like a woman who is having a midlife crisis, right? She is not living true to herself. She's not really satisfied in her marriage, but something kind of starts her reflecting on who she used to be. And it sounds like she's trying to recapture some of that while also living her current life. And I think that this is definitely going to be something that's very relatable, especially to older women who might not have realized their dreams or who might not be living the life that they originally expected to live. But there's just something about the synopsis of this that really doesn't work for me, despite my love of character driven stories, complex relationship dynamics and things like that. You know what I mean? So this is definitely one that I did not select, but this is another one that I have certainly seen going around. And I'm very interested in seeing other people's perspectives on this one. And then this next one was actually perhaps the biggest 
surprise for me. Now this was an October release, so it definitely would not have been part of my November predictions, but this is not one I really expected to be on Book of the Month's radar at all, and it's the memoir from Bethany Joy Lenz called Dinner with Vampires. Now you might recognize the name Bethany Joy Lenz because she played the character of Haley James Scott on One Tree Hill for all of the seasons, and I never really knew anything about her personal life, but apparently she used to be in a cult, and that is what this book is really about, is her experiences with that. In the early 2000s, after years of hard work and determination to break through as an actor, Bethany Joy Lenz was finally cast as one of the leads on the hit drama One Tree Hill. Her career was about to take off, but her personal life was slowly beginning to unravel. What none of the shows millions of fans knew, hidden even from her co-stars, was her secret double life in a cult. An only child who often had to fend for herself and always wanted a place to belong, Lenz found the safe haven she'd been searching for in a Bible study group with other Hollywood creatives. However, the group soon morphed into something more sinister, a slowly woven web of manipulation, abuse, and fear under the guise of a church covenant called the Big House Family. Piece by piece, Lenz began to give away her autonomy, ultimately relocating to the family's Pacific Northwest compound, overseen by a domineering minister who would convince Lenz to marry one of his sons and steadily drained millions of her TV income without her knowledge. Family minders assigned to her on set, Maoist struggle session, inspired meetings in the basement of a filthy house, and regular counseling with leadership were just part of the tactics used to keep her loyal. Only when she became a mother did Lenz finally find the courage to leave and spare her child from a similar fate. After nearly a decade and with the unlikely help of a One Tree Hill superfan, she finally managed to escape the family's grip and began to heal from the deep trauma that forever altered her relationship with God and her understanding of faith. So that certainly sounds very, very intriguing. This is also not one that I picked up, but this again is another one that I really want to see people's takes on. I'm not a big memoir nonfiction person. Even if it's somebody that I really loved and valued, I don't necessarily know if I would pick up a memoir by pretty much anyone. So this is certainly not one that I would have ever added to my box, but I am very, very intrigued to see other people who read it. I really want to know what the story was like, what she went through, and I'm interested in getting the details of the story from the people who actually read it. The next main selection was a romance called P.S. I Hate You by Lauren Connolly. Now this is actually one that did really grab my attention, but it ultimately is not one that I added to my box. This says Maddie Sanderson would be proud to honor her older brother's dying wish that she scatter his ashes over eight destinations that the adventurous 29 year old never got to visit before he died from cancer. But in his will, Josh assigned her an impossible partner to help complete the mission, Dominic Perry. Seriously, if Maddie weren't already at her brother's funeral, she would have killed him for this. Sure, Dom was Josh's lifelong best friend. He's also the infuriating man who broke Maddie's heart back when she was naive enough to give it to him. But since Dom insists on following the rules and Josh didn't leave much room for Maddie to argue the matter, they embark together on a series of farewell trips that spans thousands of miles exploring new places and revisiting their complicated history along the way. After a snowstorm leads to a shared bed, Maddie starts to wonder if her brother might be matchmaking from the grave. But when grief also reopens old wounds between them, Maddie will need more than Josh's ghostly guidance to trust Dom again. So there were a lot of things that I really enjoyed about this synopsis, right? It's going to deal heavily with grief, and I think that this is going to be harder hitting than it originally gives off in the synopsis. This is also going to be a second chance romance. It's going to be a brother's best friend romance, and there's going to be like a forced proximity trope in here. So there are a lot of really popular tropes featured in this. And again, I really do like the idea that it's going to be focused heavily on grief. So I do think that this is something that I could potentially be convinced to read in the future. The thing is, is because I'm so particular about romance and I have to be in a specific mood to really want to read romance, especially one that I feel like is going to break my heart. I just didn't know when I was going to be in the right mood or headspace to read the story. So I didn't pick it up, but I could absolutely be convinced to pick this one up based on the reviews that I hear about it. So this is not one that I'm saying no to permanently. It's one that I just said no to for right now. And the very final main selection was another fantasy. It is a book called The Teller of Small Fortunes by Julie Leong. Tao is an immigrant fortune teller traveling between villages with just her trusty mule for company. She only tells small fortunes, such as whether it will hail next week, which boy the barmaid will kiss, when the cow will calf. She knows from bitter experience that big fortunes come with big consequences. But even if it's a lonely life, it's better than the one she left behind. But a small fortune unexpectedly becomes something more when a semi-reformed thief and an ex-mercenary recruit her into their desperate search for a lost child. Soon they're joined by a beggar with a need for adventure and of course a slightly magical cat. Tao starts down a new path with companions as big hearted as her fortunes are small, but as she lowers her walls, the shadows of her past close in and she'll have to decide whether to risk everything to preserve the family she never thought that she could have. That definitely sounds more on the cozy side and we all know how I feel about cozy fantasy. So this is certainly not one that I added. And if you didn't already guess, November was a month that I easily passed on. I did not add anything to my box and that's actually really okay with me. I'm not mad about it at all because as you know, I try to read these books as they come into me and I've been really, really successful at that goal. But because of that, it definitely adds on to my TBR every month and it can be a little bit difficult trying to fit them in, especially when I'm trying to do like my TBR game and things of that nature. So I wasn't really mad that this was a skip. 
skip month. I look forward to seeing what book of the month it does in December, although I have a feeling it's going to be mostly the same, but at least I have a month free where I don't need to really worry about book of the month selections. Also, I forgot to mention that P.S. I Hate You was an early release, so that is coming out in December, so it is possible that that would have been part of my December predictions, but as it stands, it was featured in November, so of course that wasn't going to be on my radar for that prediction video. All right, and then moving on into add-ons, as I mentioned, there were five add-ons, one of which we already knew about. The only add-on selection that I got incorrectly in the prediction video was the new release from Mary E. Pearson called The Courting of Bristol Keys. This, of course, is a fantasy. If you are not familiar, Mary E. Pearson is a very beloved YA fantasy author. She wrote The Remnant Chronicles, which I read the first two books in, and they were okay, but I ultimately decided not to continue with the series. But I know a lot of people absolutely loved that series. Now, with this one, I don't see anything here in the synopsis to indicate that it is YA, so I'm going to assume that it's not, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. This says, after losing both of their parents, Bristol Keats and her sisters struggle to stay afloat in their small, quiet town of Bosky. When Bristol begins to receive letters from an aunt she's never heard of who promises she can help, she reluctantly agrees to meet and discovers that everything she thought she knew about her family is a lie. Her father might even still be alive, not killed, but kidnapped by terrifying creatures and taken to a whole other realm, the one he is from. Desperate to save her father and find the truth, Bristol journeys to a land of gods and fae and monsters. Pulled into a dangerous world of magic and intrigue, she makes a deadly bargain with a fae leader, Tygen. But what she doesn't know is that he's the one who drove her parents to live a life on the run, and he is just as determined as she is to find her father dead or alive. All right, that actually sounds really interesting. Again, this is not one that I would have added to my box just because I don't prefer my fantasy in the Book of the Month editions, but I know that there are some big Mary E. Pearson fans out there that were really excited to see this one featured. Okay, and then these final three add-ons, I'm just going to quickly run through just because I did talk about them in my Book of the Month prediction video. The first one, of course, is the newest release from Sophie Cousins called Is She Really Going Out With Him? This, of course, is a romance. Sophie Cousins' previous romances have also been featured on Book of the Month, so I was not surprised to see this one at all. It's why I did put it in my November prediction video. And the quick take on Book of the Month just says, out, dating apps, in, letting your kids pick your boyfriends, writing a column about it, and dating your office rival. So it just sounds like it's going to be a really cute, fun, sweet rom-com that does a different take on dating because she's letting her kids choose her dates. It definitely sounds sweet. Then, of course, we had Where the Library Hides by Isabel Ibanez. This is the second book in the series that started with What the River Knows, and so I don't really want to say anything else about this one just because it is a sequel and I don't want to risk spoilers. The quick take on Book of the Month just says, Return to Egypt and watch as our adventurous protagonist seeks justice in this epic follow-up to What the River Knows. Because it is a series, that is why I was pretty confident that Book of the Month would feature this one. They do tend to try to finish series, although they don't always do it, but I do think that if they put the first book of a series on there and it's received very well and is really popular, that they are more likely to continue it. And that was definitely the case with the first book in this series. And then the last book, and yet another romance that I correctly predicted, was Pictures of You by Emma Gray. Her prior book called The Last Love Note was featured on Book of the Month, and so that made her a likely contender for this month as well. I have never read anything from Emma Gray, but I have heard that The Last Love Note was very hard-hitting. It made quite a few people cry, and I'm definitely intrigued. So I've actually put that one on hold at my library. I think I'm going to listen to it and see what I think, and if I really enjoy it, then I would probably go back and pick up a physical copy of that as well as this one. But this, yet again, is another one that I have no idea when I would be in the mood or the right headspace to read a very emotional romance book. So this, of course, was another pass, especially because it was an add-on selection and not a main selection. The quick take on this one just says, a tragic car crash took her husband and her memories, will remembering get in the way of finding love again. So I believe that this is definitely going to be a second chance romance, but not in the traditional vein where you have a second chance romance with somebody that you've dated before, but a second chance at love, meaning she was in a car accident, she lost her husband, the person she thought she was going to be with for the rest of her life, and now she's going to find somebody new. So she's going to have a second chance at love, basically. I actually really love the synopsis of this, and I'm very intrigued by it. So this is definitely another one that I'm not saying no on permanently. This is just a not for now book for me. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are all the selections that Book of the Month featured for the month of November. As per usual, if you are a Book of the Month subscriber, please comment down below and let me know what you put in your box. Or if you passed all together like I did, I would love to know. Or if you are not a Book of the Month subscriber, please let me know if any of the books that they featured are now on your radar and you would add them to your TBR to purchase in the future. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some type of pink 
emoji, maybe a pink heart emoji in honor of all the romance that they featured, or even just a pink emoji in honor of the cover of that Sophie Cousins book. I'm feeling pink at the moment, so go ahead and just put me a pink emoji down below. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can find linked down below along with any books featured in this video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.